During this video, we'll look at the digestive system in the fetal pig and a drawing of both the human and the pig. This is the digestive system below the diaphragm. The esophagus that you saw in the digestive system was listed above the diaphragm. It does extend from that uh, from the laryngopharyngeal area down that decision tree, down, 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 all the way through the diaphragm, and then just as it uh, just as it emerges below the diaphragm, it becomes the stomach. So we'll look at the stomach and we'll look at some features of the stomach, not all of them, that are able to be seen, but these are the lists that we're going to address today. This is the list. So we have a cardiac portion or region of the stomach. We'll have the body of the stomach, the pyloric portion or region of the stomach, the fundus, the gastroesophageal sphincter, sometimes known as the lower esophageal sphincter, and then the pyloric sphincter, which you can imagine is associated with the pyloric portion or region. All right? And we'll see the spleen, the small intestine, the parts of the small intestine or the divisions are called the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. You may see the pancreas, depending on which pig we're looking at. We might draw it, and then we'll check out what mesentery is. We'll also be looking at the large intestine. The large intestine in a pig is shaped differently from humans and has an area called the cecum, which we also have, has a descending colon and a rectum, which leads to the anus. The large intestine, the middle portion you'll see, uh, wraps around in a sort of a spiral, uh, hence the name spiral colon where we would have our ascending and transverse. You can see in the fetal pig, you'll see a spiral portion. So we'll notice the small intestine and then the large intestine. We'll see the liver. We'll see the gallbladder, the gallbladder. And instead of the common bile duct, the word we'll need instead of common bile duct is going to be the cystic duct. So let's cross that out and put the term cystic duct. Because you can see the cystic duct coming off of the gallbladder and that turns into the common bile duct, but we're not going to see the common bile duct. It's not dissected out in the specimen. All right, so let's look at the arrangement of the organs below the diaphragm, the digestive organs, just as a reminder. In the human, where you've got your lower ribs, where they're floating ribs, you can see ribs 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, and 10. You can't see 11 and 12 because they're in the back. They don't come all the way around. Underneath the xiphoid process, notice that we've got our our red lines here where we've got our regions. Do you remember those with the epigastric, the hypergastric, the um, right and left uh, iliac, that kind of thing? So if we're looking at this picture of these organs, you'll notice your patient is facing you again. And the organ that's taking up most of the real estate on the right side is the liver. This is the liver. The liver is taking up most of the space on the right side, directly underneath the diaphragm. The diaphragm would be just above the liver and what will be the stomach on the left side. You see the stomach here on the left side. You'll note below that now the momentum has been moved and all kinds of other things, but you'll notice that there's a colon here, this large intestine. So this would be our ascending, then the transverse, trans means to go across, and then our descending, which is going to turn into this uh, sigmoid and then exit at the rectum. So what we'll see in the pig is parts of the small intestine that are not in this picture, and then we'll see a spiral colon instead of this ascending and transverse, and then we will see a descending colon that uh, is in the pig. So here's the system maybe a little easier to digest, huh? All right, that was a dad joke, and I'm not even a dad. All right, so if you look at this, you can see we're, we're gonna 
ignore the anterior tube. They've actually removed that from this picture. So there's no trachea in this picture. We're only seeing the esophagus. So the esophagus goes down, down, down. It will pass through the diaphragm, which would be at the level of the pro here, and go past the liver and into the stomach. The stomach will um, extend into the small intestine, and this will be the first part of the small intestine. Here's the second part, and you'll see the third part um, over here, which is just this little bit here, and then that will turn into the large intestine. In a human, that's the ascending, the transverse, and then the descending. So you can see descending colon here. And as the descending goes down, it turns into this little squiggly part here that looks like an S shape called the sigmoid colon. And then that turns into the rectum and out the anus. So that is the digestive system structurally uh, in total. And you'll notice with the liver on the right and the stomach on the left, but with the liver on the right, you have a green thing here. And that little green organ is the gallbladder. You also have underneath the stomach, this yellow thing here, this yellow organ is the pancreas. So that's the pancreas. So what are the organs from right to left? From right to left in the human body are the liver. And then you'll see, and you can remember liver is on the right because it ends in the letter R. You'll see the gallbladder. Then you'll see the stomach. And underneath the stomach, you'll see the pancreas. Then we'll get into the small intestine and then we'll get into the large intestine. All right, so let's draw that with the pig. We're going to make it fairly simple. Let's do the stomach first. So we'll do the parts of the stomach, which we're going to start with the diaphragm. The diaphragm is always where I want to begin. So I'm a little too close here. The diaphragm is where I want to begin because that gives me a starting place for organs either above or below. All right, so let's look at the diaphragm. I'm just going to draw the diaphragm. As our marker that tells us this is marking off the difference between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal pelvic cavity. All right, so after the diaphragm, remember that the heart sits slightly to the left, so our patient is looking at us, of course, we're facing our patient. And there's the heart, just slightly to the left. Note in that picture that we saw earlier that the esophagus travels, I'm just gonna put a ghost image of the esophagus here, but it does travel down and it pops through uh, an opening in the diaphragm, and then it's going to become the stomach. So I'm going to draw a very large stomach and I'll back out so you can see it. There we are. And now let's look at the parts of the stomach. On your list, um, you can see that there's a region called the cardiac portion. And it'll make sense if you look at where the heart is in relationship to the stomach, the heart is sitting directly on the diaphragm right above the stomach. And so sometimes people experience what they call heartburn, which is reflux disorder uh, as the reflux moves back into the esophagus. So this is the esophagus. The esophagus is going to move into the stomach and where the esophagus meets the stomach, this area is called the cardiac region or portion, whichever you prefer to stay. All right, so that's this area. And to get into the stomach, you have to go through a gate. There's a gate here, and I'm going to highlight it in red so that we'll be aware that there's a gate. By gate, I mean a control or a sphincter. And the name of that sphincter at the cardiac region is called the gastroesophageal. I'm hyphenating it so you can see that it's a compound word. I can't 
Satan has insisted on being in this video. So the gastroesophageal sphincter is the muscle that controls the entrance from the esophagus into the stomach. And that's why the word says stomach esophagus sphincter. So this is the gate between the two. Okay, so the gastroesophageal sphincter. An area of the stomach that we want to be aware of is this upper portion here. And usually it has a little extra storage area. <laughs> I kind of want to think about that. This is called the fundus. The fundus. The fundus is the upper portion of the stomach. All, right, all the way to the left. Next to the fundus, which is a good place to look for this organ, especially in the fetal pig, is a very long finger-like or tongue-like organ called the spleen. And of course, it's shaped differently in humans, but in fetal pigs, you'll see that it wraps around the stomach like a finger or a tongue on the left side of the stomach. It is also on the left side of the stomach in people. All right. So we've got the body of the stomach, which is the central portion. Then we need to move into something called the pyloric region. So I'm going to put an exit to the stomach, and then we'll note that this region, this part that begins to leave the stomach and go into the small intestines, is called the pyloric region or portion. You can call it either. Okay, so there's your pyloric region. There's another gate that controls the gastric juice or the chyme, which is the digested, not digested, which is the churned up version of food, which has some, some digestive has occurred, but not proper digestion. So this gate, which I've no noted as green here, we're going to call this one the pyloric sphincter. And you may have heard of a pyloric ulcer. It would be in this region. Or you may have heard of a duodenal ulcer. And the duodenum, the duodenum is this first part of the small intestines. So the duodenum is this very first part of the small intestine. I'm going to show you how that's spelled. Duodenum. Duo is in two. Okay. It's about 10 inches long in humans. Obviously, it's not that long in fetal pigs. So we've got these parts of the stomach. We've got where the stomach enters. I'm sorry, where the esophagus enters the stomach is a gate called the gastroesophageal sphincter. So the way to pin that during an exam would be to have a pin in that sphincter headed towards the anterior portion of the pig, towards the head of the pig. If the pin is in that sphincter, then that's the gastroesophageal sphincter because it's headed towards the esophagus. If the pin is in this sphincter and it's headed towards the liver, remember that the liver would be here covering the stomach. So if the pen is uh, towards the liver or towards the right of the body, then we know that we're talking about the pyloric sphincter. Okay. 